Boone. Boone, how are you? Me. It's good to see you. Thank you. What have you been up to? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Tell me. I've been friends with Boone for a little over a decade. It all started through a chance meeting because of our love of Bob White Quail. We hit it off immediately. Now, some of you have been here before. We've traveled together, attended sporting events, hunted at his ranch in the Texas Panhandle, and I've often told Boone I only have one problem with our relationship. I wish we were closer in age. So back, back when I was in my 20s and 30s, you were too, we could have really had some fun quail hunting for, yeah, for a long, long we time. Could. Is there a certain event that sticks out to you in the last 90 years that's really impacted you more than anything else? 90 years? 90 years. Did you know you're going to be 90 years old? I, I've not wanted to face it. <laughs> in my wildest dreams growing up in a small town in southern Illinois, I never imagined hanging out with a billionaire, having one of the richest people in the world share his personal stories with me. And I wanted you to hear a few of them too. My grandmother told me, said, Sonny, if you don't smoke cigars, you will be six feet tall. You look at me and that surprises you. I think you smoke cigars. Is that what? <laughs> As two former athletes, sports is a main topic of our conversation. Boone grew up playing basketball, although he wasn't the quickest kid in the gym. One of his college coaches once told him this. You know, Pickens, you can't run fast enough to scatter leaves. <laughs> And that wasn't true. <laughs> you could scatter leaves? I can run fast enough to scatter leaves. The best advice Boone ever got came from his dad while he was in college at Oklahoma State. He said, a fool with a plan can beat a genius with no plan. With his plan in hand, Boone graduated from OSU and had another conversation with his dad. I thought, he's going to give me some money. It's like a graduation gift. I walked over to my dad and I said, well, I got out of here and he said, you did. And he said, uh, I'm glad for you because you did what you said we're going to do. And he said, I've got one more thing for you. And I said, what is it? And he said, good luck. I love Boone's <laughs> sense of humor. We're both sarcastic and deliver a joke with a straight face. He stepped back and I hit it. Not cracking a smile. If it's in the hole, go ahead and kiss me. But the one thing I respect most about Boone it's his generosity. One of the things that I look back on is I really saved my university. That's been a, a big winner for me. All told to that university, I've given about 500 million. It's not just the $1 billion he's donated to philanthropic endeavors over the years. It's the things Boone does that most people never hear on the news or read about in the paper. Not bad for the guy his dad worried was a fool without a plan. What was the conversations like with your dad years later? You had then become a hugely successful business guy. He said, you know, you did everything you said you were going to do. Yeah. And, and I did. Before he died, he said, how long are you going to work? And I said, well, I think I'll probably work till they uh, take me out of the office in a pine box. They said, well, you answered the question. You're going to be there forever. And that's about the way I ended up.